neurocog applications, neurocognitive applications. Been around a long time. A computer that sounds human. We talk to it when we call BG&E, Baltimore Gas Electric, or Gas Electric, wherever you're at. We talk to it as an automated service when we call our internet providers. We talk to it as an automated service for most bill providers. That automated voice that you go through all those choices with. That's a neurocognitive application. Amazon's Alexa. She's a neurocog application. Apple Siri. She's a neurocog application. Watson. Watson's the name of IBM's neurocog application. That's become the hot, hot, uh, program to get. It's for aerodynamics. It's for the military. It's for the police force. It's for universities. It's for businesses all over the place. Watson does more than just neurocog. Watson also makes sense of data, which I'm guessing the other neurocogs such as Siri and Alexa do as well. And so does the simple little voice, uh, people you talk to, the voice recording you talk to when you call some bill provider. Cause I just called my internet provider because I'm having connection problems. And I realized that's, that's nothing more than a neurocognitive application. I'm, listening to is it asks me questions for my account and I respond with yes or no or or input from my telephone but a neurocognitive application also like the voice when you do dragon speech and you type it and the computer speaks for it or TTY people who are deaf you have the reverse of that where the speech is then typewritten on a computer so that they can see it. Um, neurocogs, neurocognitive applications being used to mimic, imitate human beings and our behavior have been around and part of our lives for a long time. And that is what they're using to do their neural command and control when they imitate people and use them the way they want to. That is the kind of neurocognitive computer program being used on people, on human beings, on little human beings.